Hello, hello, hello. So we're out here today. I had a long weekend of racing. Um, worked on the car a lot Friday afternoon, Friday uh, into Saturday. Had fun at the track. Um, Piedmont was a good time. We're gonna work on Randy's car a little bit later in the week. But today is uh, Sunday now, so I'm at the house by myself. So um, since the rest of the family is still on vacation, so I'm gonna uh, do a couple things today to my stuff. I'll try to get mine uh, getting closer, getting back prepared, getting it so that we can get it going. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a valve adjustment on this golf cart motor. Uh, see if we can figure out if this thing needs an actual motor, or maybe you know I didn't even think about doing a valve adjustment on it. But maybe uh, adjust the valves on it. Maybe it'll run better. Um, if not, then, you know, definitely time to replace the motor. There goes the handy dandy Harbor Freight 420cc motor. So we're going to take a look at that and get that going. Um, see if it works out. And then I'm going to go ahead today also and hang the pistons on the rods. Go ahead and get those back. My machine shop guy, he went on vacation last week, so it worked out pretty good for me. I'm sure everybody is banging on his door, you know, getting their, trying to get their stuff. Everybody is race season, so, you know, everybody's impatient. I try, I try to not be, but, you know, luckily I've got some other things I can do. But, um, so hopefully uh, I get my stuff back this week sometime, um, and then that way I can start reassembling my stuff. Um, I probably have, realistically, uh, a couple weeks, three weeks of work to do on mine. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. We're going to hang the pistons on the rods today and go ahead and get that part taken care of. All right, part number one is done. That went fairly pain-free. This is the first time I've ever adjusted rock arms and valves on a golf cart. So I don't even know which one is the intake and which one was the exhaust. I didn't really pay attention. I was just adjusting them when they were closed. But the one on the right closest to the carburetor, which I would assume would be the intake valve, but I could be completely wrong. So it had zero lash. So the other one had about probably 10 or 12 thousandths so I adjusted both of them to five thousandths and it is running so much better now the real question is is typically when you have a, a problem with lash it loosens up in every experience that I've ever had but in this particular instance it tightened so I'm going to say probably maybe the valve is tuliping could be wrong I mean I don't know I'm gonna just there again this motor is like four years old so I'm gonna just run it till it stops. And apparently I need to do some, take the valve lash on it from time to time. But uh, right now, part number one is a, a lot better. All right, on to the next project. Um, so I got my rods and my pistons cleaned up. So I'm about to put them together as an assembly. Um, just a couple things, I'm sure a lot of y'all already know, but just a reminder, um, when you're looking at the, the, the rod, there's always going to be this beveled edge that's going to be the side that goes toward the crankshaft so that'll go on the crankshaft and this will be the side the flat one where the bearing goes all the way to the edge that will always be the one that is next to the next connecting rod so an example of that this is the way they'll look in the in the motor so you'll have flat side to flat side and then ch chamfered side to the crank on this side, then the other journal to crank, of course, will go on the other side. So that's something to always be careful of when you're uh, assembling. Uh, make sure the, the chamfered edge is on the crankshaft. So on a small block Chevrolet, the chamfered edge is always gonna be to your left when you assemble it. So um, this is my new piston, uh, CP piston again. 
but look at the difference in the in the size of the pins so i'm gonna put that 200 wall in it 140 versus 200 that thing's pretty big here goes your little c clip e clip type deals that hold them in so we're fixing to start assembling the rods to the pistons check it out All right, so most of the piston stuff went pretty good. I'm still working on that a little bit, but um, Matthew needed something welded on the radiator, some bungs on his new car. So I am not a welder by any means. I can usually make it stick together, but hell, sometimes not even lucky doing that. This is definitely gonna have to be uh, ground on. Maybe not, maybe it'll be all right. Okay, so that one is tacked. So we're gonna have to get that in the, we're gonna have to stand it up. Well, one thing is for sure, I am not a welder by trade. And we use, those are used fittings. I think that's the second time they've been welded on. And this is a used radiator. So, I mean, it's not, super duper clean but i think it will not leak but i don't know we'll see if it does we'll bubble gum weld it up some more try to melt it on down through there you can see that fitting is used also we're all budget racers over here if you can't tell so we like to do it on a budget there's a couple good good spots on weld but the bulk of it on this one is yeah not so good as long as it holds water that's all we care about right fairly successful evening tonight. As you can see, we got all eight pistons on the rods. Something that was interesting, uh, these are used rods. And um, so five of them fit the pistons perfect. Um, the other three, the big end, or the small end, I'm sorry, the small end down in here was a little too wide for my piston. Now my piston is an off the shelf piston. So these rods were designed for a custom piston that has a, a wider pin ball. So I mean, these pistons are not really designed for what I'm trying to do with it. You see how everything is kind of shrunk in. It's not real wide. It's not full skirted. Um, so, for, but for some reason, three of them did not fit. Uh, the other ones, uh, they were the proper width. Um, and it was only 50 thousandths off. I mean, they would fit down in there, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't go all the way down. It was too tight. I didn't have enough clearance from side to side. And so now you can see kind of hard to do but I've got side to side clearance I've got side to side clearance about 50 thousandths that should be good um so once we start assembling the motor I mean we'll see make sure we got that thing centered up in there and if I need to you know flat grind them a little bit more I will but all I did was on the um on the small end basically what I did is we have a uh a belt sander and I took the belt sander and just run it on the belt sander for a few minutes on each side, rotating it, making sure that I was doing it nice and square. And, um, and it, you know, it did. You just have to take your time when you're doing it. But, uh, so all those are done. So we have made some progress. We got a little bit of uh, welding on Matthew's stuff. So that's good. So um, made some progress, got some decent stuff done. So 
we'll see what happens in the next few days with mine. Appreciate y'all joining in. Uh, like, comment, share. Go fast and get some wind likes. See y'all next time. Thanks.